Welcome to another video. On this one, I'm going to replace the two boost converter valves and the diverter valve to hopefully sort out the boosting issues that I'm having. Uh, so I've just finished doing the manifold. Uh, there's a link to that video in the description. Um, these I got from eBay, so they're aftermarket items but they're matched to the original BMW part numbers. Um, the boost converter valves were, from memory, about £45 each, uh, but I got a 10% discount with an eBay voucher, and the diverter valve was around £21, um, and then there was a 5% 5, 5 discount on that. The diverter valve is actually the same valve on, on eBay, they, they call it an uh, EGR cooler valve or something. Um, and it's actually the same valve that is used uh, on the EGR valve. I'm not even sure which part it is, but it's the same part number anyway. And it's actually the valve that's connected underneath the um, end of the manifold where the not the throttle body, but the, um, I think it's the anti-shudder valve is connected and this connects underneath for the EGR valve, but this particular one is over the other side with the, uh, with the boost controller stuff. So let's go and fit it. These valves are on this bracket here. So you can just about see the valves. It's not going to be very easy access, but I've got to get down there somehow. Right, so just a bit of an update. These are the valves and they're a pain to get to. So I've had to undo all of the wiring from this back wiring loom and also this vacuum tank which connects down there. So I've taken that off and now I've got access to the bolt there. So basically undo that bolt, this bolt, this one, and there's one more underneath. And then this whole unit will come off with the uh, converters attached. I think also if I take this off, it'll also leave those behind, I'm not sure yet. The more I delve into this, the worse it gets. So I've just had to remove this, it slides in on here because I've had to remove all the bolts that hold this to the metal plate because the last bolt in the metal plate is behind this. So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there, which is behind that sensor that I've just taken off. This vacuum pipe here is the one that goes down to this actuator. You can see that this actuator moves, but when I pull vacuum on here, can't seem to get it to work. Finally, so I had to remove the diverter valves off of there and then there was some cables stuck to the back there and now it's just that last thing there which I need to get off. I can see how that comes off now. Right, things didn't quite go to plan after I recorded that last bit. Uh, it was getting dark and I started putting the, putting the uh, pipes and everything back together. And then I realized that I'd only replaced one of the actuators and one of the new ones was still on the floor with one of the old ones. And it got dark and I couldn't record anymore. Anyway, I got it all back together, uh, gave it a quick test drive and it still wasn't boosting properly at lower revs, 
So at that point, I thought, well, I'm going to just leave it until I've had the uh, lambda sensor replaced, which was done um, earlier. And actually, it's driving a bit better, but um, that's sort of not the whole story, really. So when it went in for the lambda sensor, the garage did a before and after um, for me. And, um, oh, and the Lambda sensor was £44 in labour to get replaced, which wasn't too bad, actually. Uh, it came out pretty quick. So I'm just going to switch the camera around and show you the fault codes that the garage uh, read before and after the Lambda sensor was replaced. So as we can see, there's there's a couple on there which I knew about, and some of these might actually be old, and I've had the battery off, so some of them may even be related to the battery, but oil pressure switch, I know that that's always coming up. Oxygen sensor, we know I had that replaced. Uh, there's one here for the EGR valve, which could still be an issue, a couple for the EGR valve. Uh, and then there's some more for the air mass sensor, uh, flow sensor, air intake sensor, and the thing is these are all things I've had disconnected, so I'm not 100% sure whether they're actually related to any actual issues. They're not the ones that came up on Carly when I uh, plugged it in. Um, interesting one, engine mount activation, which I didn't even know was uh, was electronic, but if you look at what came up after, um, two of them, charge air temperature sensor, which is on the pipe from the intercooler up to the manifold, um, and engine mount activation again. So I've spoken to one of the guys at BM Minitech in Essex, uh, who are not that far away from me. And what they've said is that the engine mounts are vacuum controlled, which funnily enough, I'd been reading about online uh, last night. And they use the same vacuum or some of the same vacuum system as the turbo. So there's possibly a vacuum leak there somewhere. And to be honest, I'm gonna get the timing chains done and I'm going to also get the clutch and flywheel done. So it may just come down to the fact that I'm just going to take it in and have everything done in one go. So we'll see about that. As for the Lambda sensor, as you can see, it's pretty sooty. Well, things are looking pretty good to me. Oh, here's sooty as well. Hello, sooty. And I'm assuming that's because it was possibly overfueling. I'm not sure, but it certainly drives a lot better, a lot smoother than it did before the Lambda sensor was replaced. But I'm still not getting the boost that I believe I should be from a car with 215 horsepower. It certainly doesn't feel as quick as the previous 320Ds I've driven, and it doesn't feel as quick as our 220D um, Grand Tourer so I think there's still some investigation to be done there but um, we're getting there so that's it for this video uh, the manifold video is going to be out later this week uh, we're going to Lanzarote and then this video will launch uh, next week when we're back and then I haven't got anything planned for the next couple of weeks for this. So if you've got any ideas, anything you want to see on this, whether you want to see a full interior detail um, or some more mechanical stuff, I'll try and get something else out for the end of the month. Bye for now. Actually, it's not quite it. I need to put the scuttle panel back on. So. After this, there's going to be just a time lapse of the scuttle panel going back on and all the bits around the bottom of the windscreen just to uh, make it all watertight again. Mm -hmm.